Good morning again. <laughs> yes. So Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes. There's some there's some problem in my PowerPoint. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, this morning, I'm going to speak about news, especially some good news. What is news? What's news? In Korea, uh, my mother country, Korea, there's a very famous saying regarding news that many journalists quote. That is, if a dog bites a man, that's not news. <laughs> but if a man bites a dog, that's news. <laughs> yes, it's a very famous one. Yes. So news means something unusual, something new, but it should be something worth knowing about. We are surrounded by lots of news every day, but the problem is most of them are bad ones. Bad news. Nowadays, bad news is overflowing, like pandemics, you know? Ukraine wars, high prices, and Team Canada in World Cup. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's real difficult to find the really good news. But the Bible says there's a good news of a great joy for all the people. So it's the birth of Jesus. So I'm going to share why the birth of Jesus is such a great news. So let me read some verse from, from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 2, 6 to 14. And while, the, while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her first, firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same, oh, next one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I missed the X. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. uh, verse 8. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you uh, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in a swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among, the, among those with whom he is placed. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Father, we give you our thanks and praise that the light of your love came into the world through your Son, Jesus. Through your Son, you created everything. Through your Son, you gave us life. And through your Son, you gave eternal life to all who would believe in him. This is good news. Indeed, this is good news of great joy, the best news of all. I pray that we would be filled with joy because of the good news. I also pray that we could share this news with others. I pray in Jesus' holy name. The verses we just read are about good news of great joy. I'd like to speak about why the birth of Jesus is good news of great joy. At the same time, I'm going to share three headlines that make the news of birth of Jesus so great. The headlines are about, first, the place where the news happened, and the second, the people who received the news first, and the third, 
the groups that rejoiced because of the news. So let's move on to the headline number one. Headline number one, Grace the King was born, has been born in the lowest place. As we learned last Sunday, Joseph and his wife Mary had to travel to Bethlehem to be registered. It was a long journey and they were very tired. It must have been harder for Mary, who was pregnant. To make matters worse, suddenly the time came for Mary to give birth. The couple needed a place for a new baby and tried to find a room to deliver their child. But there was a big problem. Verse 7 says, And she gave birth to her preferred sponsor and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The couple visited an inn, knocked at the door desperately, and asked for a room. But there was no place for them in the inn. So Mary gave birth to her son and laid him in a manger. When you read the word in, in, I-N-N, please don't think in your mind, holiday in, <laughs> or Ramadan in, or days in. No, it was not like that. Many people think Jesus was born in a cave or in a stable of a commercial accommodation. No, it's very unlikely. The reality was totally different from what we see in some pictures of Christmas cars. In most cars, uh, we typically see a nice little stable with a little wooden place where there is a straw and little baby. It's a beautiful setting. And it may even look romantic and peaceful. <laughs> so some people might say, I wish I had been born in a manger. It's going to be sweet. <laughs> no, it's not like that. The English word in is a translation from the Greek word kataluma. And kataluma is defined in Strong's Bible Dictionary as a place of rest, lodging, or guest quarters. And most scholars uh, agree that the word kataluma used in these verses mean guest chamber or upper room of a house, not paid accommodations. This is a picture of a typical Jewish home in the first century. Homes were divided into two levels. There was a guest chamber, kataluma, in the upper level, and lower level was used for sheltering animals. At the time, the eating and sleeping quarters of a two-story house uh, would have been on the upper floor. The lower level was often used as a shelter for livestock during inclement weather. We know that Mary and Joseph were turned away because there was no room in the upper room, gas chamber, kataluma. But they may have been offered shelter in the lower level among the animals. That would explain their access to a manger where Jesus was laid. Bethlehem means house of bread. It's a beautiful name. It was a small country town where people were very hospitable. But under the cruelty of Roman Empire, people's hearts became cold. Nobody was willing to provide a room for a woman who was about to 
give birth to a baby. When Mary cried out due to the pains of delivery, people blocked their ears with their hands and pretended not to hear it. We can imagine how much Joseph and Mary suffered in their heart. But there was no choice. They had to go into the stinking place made for animal and prepare themselves to deliver a baby. How on earth could this kind of thing happen? Joseph and Mary would deny the upper room because Lord was already occupied or reserved by other travelers. The travelers may have been rich or powerful people, but Joseph was not. If Joseph had been rich, if he had been able to offer lots of money, he surely could have gotten a room, but he wasn't. He wasn't rich. There was no room for this poor couple. Jesus is in very nature God. He's the holy God who created the heavens and the earth. Yet, in order to save people from their sin, he became flesh and was born as a baby in the lowest place, manger. The great king in the whole universe was born in the lowest place reserved for animals. Baby Jesus, who was laid in a poor manger, may look very sorrowful and hopeless. But we learn from the baby Jesus how God works. God's salvation work is done through humble serving and self-sacrifice. It was the beginning of Jesus' life on the earth. He was turned away from the upper room. Even while still in the womb, he was rejected by his own people. They did not know who the child was and would not make room for him. About 2,000 years ago, when Jesus came to this world, there was no room for him. How about nowadays? Is there room for Jesus? There's still no room for Jesus in the lives of many people to this day. They have room for their own life. They have room for their own job, for their passion, for their plan, but they don't have room for Jesus. How about us? Do we have room for Jesus in our life? Now, we move on to the second headline. That is, it's about the people who heard the news first. Headline number two, great news has been sent to the lowest people. As read, the news of the birth of Jesus was delivered to shepherds who were out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. Who were they? Who were the shepherds? They were the ones that were not part of the main, mainstream society in any town. Shepherds were considered the lowest rung on the social ladder. They were given to the outskirts of the town. They were excluded. In the New Testament era in Israel, shepherds were considered ceremonially unclean. As shepherds, they had to work 24-7, so they couldn't take a Sabbath. They couldn't comply with the strict Sabbath regulations, and they had to touch dead animals often. So they were considered by the religious leaders in Jerusalem to be ceremonially unclean. 
not only Jewish people, but Gentiles also despised the shepherds. Their work, their work kept them isolated from society, and many mainstream people all around the world just looked down on them. According to the book of Genesis, when Jacob's family moved into Egypt, Egypt, Joseph told his brothers and his father Jacob like this. When Pharaoh calls you and says, what is your occupation? You shall say, your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth even until now, both we and our fathers, in order that you may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. Abomination, very strong word. People just hated shepherds. From ancient times, shepherds has, had been usually the ones overlooked by the society. In every culture, there are shepherds. In every culture, there are outcasts. There are always marginalized people that are just overlooked by us. The greatest, greatest news ever, ever, didn't go to the imperial people in Rome. It didn't go to the priests, religious leaders in Jerusalem. It went to shepherds, the despised people, marginalized people, poor people. God wanted to tell them first. At this point, a couple of two important questions are raised. Why is it that the greatest news ever, greatest news ever in the world was announced to the lowest people, shepherds? Likewise, why was Jesus born in the lowest place, manger? The answer can be summarized as just one word, that is accessibility. Accessibility. Because the news was delivered to the shepherds, even the most, even the most marginalized people could have an access to a manger. If the news had been delivered to religious leaders or royal people, people of lower classes would never, never had a chance to come to a place where Jesus was laid. It also explains why Jesus was born in a manger. If he had been born in a royal palace like other kings, only a few selected groups of people could have seen him. Most people couldn't even have seen his face. But because Jesus was born in the lowest place and the news was sent, to the lowest people, his place was accessible to anyone who wanted to meet him. The manger is open to anyone and everyone. Actually, his birth previewed his life. His life was lived that way. Any kinds of people approached him. One time, the disciples tried to keep the children away from him, and Jesus rebuked them and says, Let those children come to me. On another occasion, Jesus accepted a woman who had a medical issue for 12 years and was considered unclean. And Jesus had the time for her and healed her. He even accepted lepers, tax collectors, gentle women, who were all, all rejected by the mainstream society. His manger, the place he was laid, is open to everyone and anyone. Anyone can come to Jesus 
and those who put their trust in him will absolutely accept it by him. And some scholars believe that the shepherds in those verses were watching a very particular kind of flock. In the New Testament era, the flock that was raised around Bethlehem was mostly the lambs for sacrifice that would be sacrificed in Jerusalem during Passover. Isn't it interesting? The people that were perhaps raising the lambs for sacrifice were about to meet and did meet the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The shepherds would see the one who will put an end to all of the animal sacrifices and make them righteous. Now, I'm moving to the headline number three. Headline number three, greatest joy for both people and angels. According to, according to verse 10, the angel told the shepherds that he brought them good news of great joy for all the people. What was the good news? 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The good news was the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth of Jesus was a great joy for all the people. It is because the baby in the manger was not just an ordinary baby. He was the promised savior of the world. He's the savior. He's the one who saves us. Saves us from what? He saves us from the most fundamental problem in the world. There are many problems in this world, but the most, most fundamental problem is the problem of sin and death. All people are destined to die eternally because of the sins. But the Christ who saves us from all our sins finally has come. Anyone who puts their trust in the Savior would be saved from the powers of sin and death. No more sin, no more death. Isn't that the greatness for all of us? And especially for the people in those days, in those days, the birth of Jesus was a great news because it gave them a new hope. It was one of the darkest times in human history, ruled by cruel Roman Empire. They thought there was no hope under the tyranny of Roman Emperor. But the birth of Jesus gave them a bright living hope in the darkest moment. The news that the Christ Savior of the world has come made them realize that the current Roman emperor was just a temporary ruler and the new kingdom where the Savior would reign forever will come soon. Yes, the birth of Jesus was the greatest joy for all human beings. But there were other beings that rejoiced due to the birth of Jesus. Who were they? Angels, the heavenly beings. Verse 13 and 14 says, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Suddenly, a multitude of heavenly hosts appeared and was praising God. At this moment, it was anything but silent night, holy night, all is calm. No, it was 
crazy night, noise night, dynamic night. Why were the angels praising God? Technically, the birth of Jesus was not for the angels. Jesus came to this world to save people, not angels. Then, why was there the great joy for angels? Is it because they have found something marvelous in the work of God? God's salvation plan was so great that even the angels in heaven were greatly amazed and praised God. Angels are heavenly beings that serve God. They are, they are higher beings than us and know more about God and spiritual world than us. That's true. But that doesn't mean they know everything. Only God knows everything. Just as we want to know more about God, those heavenly beings are also eager to know more about God they serve. 1 Peter 1.12 says, It was revealed to them. Them, that means prophets in context. It was revealed to prophets that they were serving not themselves but you in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preached the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Angels long to look into how the good news preached. They are very interested in looking into how God works. And God, God also wants angels to learn and realize his greatness and his wisdom through his work. Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul spoke about a very interesting truth regarding angels and the church in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. Now, verse 10 is very important. Verse 10, his intent, God's intent, his intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. God's intent was to show his wisdom to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Who are they? Who are the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms? Angels. Angels. God wants to teach something to the angels through the church, the body of Christ. The birth of Jesus has shown the angels the unimaginable wisdom of God. God's amazing wisdom was that he made his own son born in the lowest place to be the savior of the world. And the angels in heaven were deeply astonished by God's unfathomable wisdom and love. When they saw the birth of Jesus in a manger, they couldn't help praising God. They probably admired like this. Oh, see how much God loves these people. Oh, God, how wise you are. Oh, Lord, you became a little baby to save these sinners. How could the Prince of Heaven we had been serving be born in a manger? Oh God, 
you are awesome. Can you hear the exclamations and the shoutings of joy in heaven when Jesus was born? The birth of Jesus was not just an orderly event. It was a cosmic event. When he was born, all of heaven held its breath and watched carefully. It has brought good news of great joy for not only people, but also those celestial beings. I'm going to end. There are some events and news that give us some joy. But the birth of Jesus brings us great joy because it has, he has come to save us from sin and death. So let us rejoice and enjoy the birth of our Lord Jesus who came to the lowest place to be with the lowest people like us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your great love. Thank you that you have sent your one and only Son, Jesus, to save us. Lord Jesus, even though you are the King of kings, you are late in a manger to invite us to your humble side. Lord, thank you so much for your great love. Help us to have room for you in our life. I pray in your holy name.